Sure. Trustee Johnson? Yeah. Trustee Renfro? Yeah. Trustee Daniels? Yeah. Mayor Ryan? Yes. Yeah. Trustee Hobbs? Absent for tonight. Does he have a reason? I'm sorry? Yes. Does he have an excuse? He does, indeed. Uh, so we're going to start with the presentations of the activities report. We're going to start with uh, recreation and parks. for Commissioners Renee Cordor, Ricky Cook, Gordis Watts, Randy Harrison, and Superintendent George Sanders. I was excused, and Commissioners Jeff Spencer and Barbara Moore was absent. The meeting was called to order at 6.45 p.m. by Superintendent George Sanders. It was a motion to accept the meeting of March meeting minutes by Commissioner Renee Cordor. The motion was seconded by Commissioner Randy Harrison, and the motion was carried. The commission reviewed 11 letters from the community requesting the use of the facilities at Hempstead Parks. Eight requests were approved, two requests were denied, and one request was placed on hold pending receipt of further information requested by the commission. The commission reviewed old business, which was the dedication of the Skate Plaza at Kennedy Memorial Park, the new athletic field at Kennedy Memorial Park, which is scheduled to be completed by the end of July, and the parking lot spaces were also to be repainted, but due to the construction of the athletic field, that will be done after the field is completed. And also, the commissioners will review the fee structure that we established in the beginning of the year and finalize it at our next meeting. Also, new business was discussed, the pool safety plan for the 2019 pool application an updated safety plan for the Kennedy Park Pool Complex has been submitted to the Nassau County Department of Health. The repaving of the Kennedy Park path and the installation of the outdoor volleyball court has been completed. The only remaining update is to line the volleyball court. The meeting was adjourned at 7.50 p.m. by Commissioner Renee Cordura. The next monthly meeting of the Parks and Recreation Commission will be scheduled for Tuesday, June 25th, beginning at 6.30 p.m. Uh, what I'm about to say is off a topic regarding my report, but since I'm up here, I decided to say it now. I would like to personally thank the person responsible for the six-week introduction to Spanish classes held at the Hempstead <coughs> Public Library in April and May. I attended these classes on Tuesday from 6.30 to 8 o'clock p.m. and the instructor Miss Irene was excellent. All the participants have one question which I present to the board. Are, these plan are there plans to continue these classes at Hempstead Public Library in the immediate future? Um, first, I want to say um, uh, thank you as well. Not we, we do everything possible for our <laughs> okay, so is anybody? I would have been more impressed if you said it in Spanish. I started, to, I started to do that, but I didn't only because I wanted to stress the fact that we need part two. Point <laughs> <laughs> uh, point. <counterpoint. laughs> and also, let's uh, pray for the staff members that are in the hospital. Yes. yes. I, I will find out at the next at the upcoming. Uh, Library meeting. Okay, let you let know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Human relations. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you are the one the class. Oh, by the way, our colleague is here. You want to say, trust me, you're going to you go with it. <laughs> I, uh, before I give my report, um, I concur with uh, Ms. Henry. I did attend the um, six-week Spanish class, and uh, I can attest, attest to that. Uh, I did attempt to take a Spanish class before, and 
I struggled with it, but with this young lady at the Spanish class, I did learn a lot. And it was, it was um, her teaching style uh, really helped us. So our, my activity report for the Human Relations Council. Tuesday, May 9th, uh, we attended a planning meeting with the local pastors in anticipation for the Village of Hempstead Annual Gospel Night event, which will encompass worship for the entire community. Every culture that's in the community will be represented during this Gospel Night. Thursday, May 16th, the Village of Hempstead hosted the annual Old Americans Month program, where we recognized 25 seniors that resided in the village. We just recognized the seniors for their wisdom, their strength, and their contributions to the betterment of the village. Monday, May 20th, uh, residents and seniors, excuse me, Monday, May 20th, I attended the meeting at uh, 155 Greenwich. Residents and seniors occasionally reach out to me in regards to food pantries because they're struggling to get their needs met. So I arranged for Island Harvest um, throughout the next few months. We're going to attend various senior buildings uh, with the intent to help them sign up for the SNAP program. Uh, Sunday, May 26th, I attended the, actually hosted the 134th Memorial Day ceremony and parade at Greenfield Cemetery. Just wanted to let the community know that this Saturday, June 8th, the Village of Hempstead will host its annual Tyree Curry 5K Walk Run. Uh, we ask that everyone come out and attend. Also, we're going to have um, a health fair and a community day. June 15th, the Village of Hempstead will be celebrating its second annual Juneteenth Day. So we hope that everyone can come out and attend that. That's going to be on June 15th at Kennedy Park. The hours are 1 to 5 p.m. As well, I just suggest everyone subscribe to the community calendar on the village website, www.villageofhempstead.org. Uh, Ms. Harwood, before you step down, I just want to uh, make it known that language throughout the new language is an idea that none other than Henry Holly, I believe it was the 2014-2015 school year at the annual book bag giveaway, he suggested to myself for Monty Johnson that language duality in our school dual language is important and we've been doing our best to uh, foster that program with that duality from the earlier grades. And I'm happy that the adults such as yourself are also enjoying what the village is offering, offering in regards to dual language. Well, I think it's imperative because we have to uh, serve the residents of the village. The culture right. here is changing, right. so we need to be equipped to be able to help them. Right. We want you to be able to compete on a global level, on a job level. We want you to be able to say, um, I'm bilingual, so when it comes time for that job application, we need you to be prepared. And the rest of the residents should do it. Well, I, I, I would say that as, 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 well, as well as my educational requirements will help me better to be able to serve in that capacity as well. You're doing a fine job. Keep up the work. Thank you so very much. Thank you. And the Tyree Curry event is not any. 9 a.m. Yes, to 2 p.m. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, first awareness of board. There's no report and no changes. Thank you. Hempstead Library. Traffic Safety Board. Hempstead Council Civics Association. I don't have too much to report, but I wanted to uh, let everybody know that <laughs> Tuesday of last week, uh, two of the trustees, Waylon Hobbs and Jeffrey Daniels, uh, got a bus, and me and a few of our residents went around to some of the places that uh, was discussed in the, uh, the meetings. And one of the places that we went to was the, the house or the home in the Heights where the uh, raccoons and stuff were taking over. The building needs to be removed. And we also uh, want to plan another bus uh, trip through the, the developers with the residents so that we can see what's going on in our neighborhood. Thank you. It's, 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 it's actually 240 Bennett that, that he's referring to. I know it's on the list with the, with the zombie home task force. I, I will report that. Um, um, we do have the back home trapper coming, we got to get signed off from the property manager from the bank before we can enter and put the traps in. That has been attained by the building department and the, the traps will be set by the end of the year. 
We also would like to mention that uh, the Deputy Mayor Charles Murphros, along with uh, our village videographer, Antonio Kelly, pretty much memorialized what was going on at that house more than a month ago. Here, here. <laughs> Youth Council, Zoning Board, Planning Board, um, Chair um, Person, Pettis was here, but she had to leave, so she left the report. Um, Mayor Ryan, Board Trustees, Village of Barnett's and Village Residents, Incorporated Village of Hempstead Planning Board meeting, met on May 20th, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. Presents were she Walker, Little Brown, Newwood Beans, Marcia Turner, and Vanessa Pettis. Absent none. Also present, Jackie Soro, Council to the Planning Board, and Michelle Baines, Administrator of the Planning Board. Acceptance of the minutes, moved by Jimmy Pettis, that the reading of the minutes of the regular meeting of April 23rd, 2019, be dispensed with and be accepted as reviewed. Second, second by Newwood Beans, we were in favor. Case decisions. The following cases were approved. Case number 755, 121 Bedell Street for site plan approval of Supreme Commission concept. Case number 773, 199 Fulton Avenue for site plan approval, Verizon facade restoration. Case number 774, 27 Commander Avenue, site plan approval to construct a two story single family dwelling. Case number 775, 123 Main Street, site plan approval of Professional Torch Barber Shop. Case number 776, site plan approval of Princeton Street for subdivision of lot and to construct two and a half story brick dwelling. Case number 778, 522 Peninsula Boulevard, site plan approval of New Stone Creation. In case number 782, 44 Elm Avenue, site plan approval to construct a one story family dwelling. There be no further business and motion was made by Denise Pettis to adjourn the meeting. Second by Marcia Turner and all was in favor. The next planning board meeting will be held Monday, June 17, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. Respectfully submitted by Denise Pettis, Chairperson. Um, Hempstead Housing Authority. Just a nice day for this. CDA. Good evening, Your Honor, trustees. Good Just an overview of some of the current projects the CDA is working on. Empire State Property Reduction Initiative, also known as ESPRI. The grant term has been extended through March 31st, 2020. The CDA has requested an additional allocation of $54,750 to support the Community Empowerment Resource Center through the end of the grant term. These funds will be matched with Community Development Block Grant funds. We also held an interagency council 90-minute stress management workshop on May 23rd with representatives from 10 agencies uh, participating with an overwhelmingly po positive response. The Local Initiative Support Coalition is the initiative that funds our zombie home initiatives. And we have received an additional grant award of $50,000 the CDA will work with the Zombie Homes Task Force to determine the best use of this additional funding. Uh, the CDA's properties, we will be um, submitting site plan approval for the development of 38 Thorn Avenue into a, a three-story, excuse me, a three-bedroom over three-bedroom duplex. We're hoping to get that on the calendar for the July the zoning and planning board meetings. <coughs> the next general meeting of the Hempstead Community Land Trust will be held at Kennedy Park on Tuesday, June 11th, beginning at 6.30 p.m. Our Safe Browse to School grant, we're moving forward with the Jackson Main Elementary School. The design phase has been completed and the project is currently out for bid through 11 a.m. on Tuesday, June 25th, 2019. The project is on track to be to complete construction in the summer of 2019. 
We also met with Acting Superintendent Regina Armstrong to discuss uh, the construction schedule for Jackson, Maine, as well as the educational components for David A. Patterson and Jackson, Maine. This educational rollout is scheduled to be implemented in the fall of 2019. The Main Street Beautification Project is in its final phases. Street plantings, benches, bike racks, and trash receptacles are scheduled to be installed this month. The delivery of the water feature has been delayed by the manufacturer and should be completed by August 2019. We also underwent um, a state review and there were findings uh, based upon the report and the um, record keeping by Gideon Construction and we held a debriefing on May 29 to develop a correction action plan and we are in the process of implementing that correction of the action at this time. The Brownfield Opportunities Area Steering Committee was held a meeting on May Thursday, May 23rd. The public meeting is scheduled for Thursday, June 27th. We have flyers in the back. And it will be held at Kennedy Park from 5.30 to 8, 8 p.m. We have flyers in English and Spanish. We also met with representative from, from RXR on May 28th to discuss the Nassau County project. We discussed opportunities for collaboration for local businesses, minority women-owned business enterprise goals, internships for our students, as well as a workforce pipeline. We also discussed potential impacts on village transportation and infrastructure. So in addition to the Hempstead Community the Land Trust meeting, I wanted to make uh, the village officials aware that there will be a fair housing training, a one hour fair housing training held during the board of director meetings for the land trust from 5.30 to 6.30 at, the, at Community Park prior to the land trust general body meeting. Additionally, I wanted to announce, you'll see some flyers in the back, um, the Hempstead Youth Field Program is kicking off. Registration will begin this month with the classes to begin uh, in September of this year. That's all I have for this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Basically, so Merck is just a, a review of the records of the project files. And Gideon is our consultant that's responsible for tracking uh, site approval by the prime contractor and making sure that all the records are properly organized for when the state comes in to review the files. They weren't as organized as they should have been. And their findings with recommendations as to what's missing and how that should be corrected. We held a debriefing with Gideon and they've been in over the last several days to get the files in order. Once that corrective action plan is completed, the state will come back in to review and it's our hope to be able to close it out once the last installation is completed, at the end of the installation of the water feature, and, and so everything should be in compliance uh, within the next few weeks. Okay, it's, well, it's on the, um, the, the main street project. Yes. Can, can we communicate if it hasn't been communicated to Denise so we can put that up on the board website <coughs> in terms of the, the closing of the construction schedule with this and with itself, we can with Frankie later to discuss that as well. So at least the residents know where the traffic points are going to be in terms of backup and delays in, a, in the village, right? Because there's a lot of projects going on sometimes. Franklin is, is tall up. Yeah, it's congested. So if the residents know ahead of time, at least they can plan for it. I will definitely follow up with Janice. And we'll do the same with, with Franklin and the DVW side. And then this is the last thing on, on, the, uh, on the hub project. Is that a, a connection directly to the CDA in terms of trying to measure what the impact is going to be, or is the, is the village also having that same dialogue with, with the hub in terms of what the impact, potential impact would be? So we've met with them. There's a few of us that are on different committees, and we have met with them. We're updated on a constant basis, meeting the results, figure out them. So I serve on several um, <coughs> committees throughout the county. Um, related committees, for example, I serve on the Uniondale Land Trust Board of Directors, and because of the various committees I serve on, I often get more than one chance to speak out on different issues, and I always bring up the impacts on the village of Hempstead when I speak at any of these meetings. 
and because of some of the concerns I raised, they felt it important enough to come and sit down with me directly to talk about it. The mayor is absolutely correct. He represents um, the, the village on the steering committee uh, to talk about not only the community benefits, but the infrastructure, et cetera. Um, but it never hurts to have several people speaking out on that. No, I, mean, I, mean, I wasn't aware I was happy, so yes. I think that'd be helpful, particularly the committees like traffic safety. So I'm not, I'm not on an active committee, but they sought me out because I was complaining. So they saw, they came, they came to address some of the concerns that I had expressed. Um, and and the mayor is our representative on the on the steering committee. Electrical board. Good evening, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, Trustees. Mm -hmm. I'm here to present the report for the Electrical Licensing Board. Mm -hmm. Last regular meeting of the Electrical Licensing Board was held at the Building Department on uh, May 23rd, 2019, called order at 4.15 p.m. Uh, present was Mr. Constantine, the Electrical Inspector, Mr. Kinjemi, uh, Mr. Dimitru, myself, uh, absent with Mr. Casillo. Uh, the minutes of the meeting of the April 2019 uh, were uh, approved as read. Uh, all were in favor. The following applicant, uh, there was no applications to take the exam this month. Uh, the following applicant passed part one of the license exam, Ms. Renee De Piazza of Garden City, New York. Um, the following applicant failed part one of the electrical license exam, Mr. James Madigan of Brookhaven, New York. And the follow following applicant was given his oral exit exam and recommended for an electrical license uh, for the village of Hempstead by the uh, Board of Trustees. Uh, Mr. Brian Flanagan of Huntington, New York. A uh, motion was made by myself and seconded by Mr. Congeni uh, and carried uh, anonymously. Uh, discussion took place regarding uh, the continuation of the discussion on Article 11026 of the National Electrical Code, dedicated equipment space uh, about electrical switchboards, panels, and motor control centers. Also, PSC and G requirements for obtaining temporary electrical certificates was uh, discussed and Questions were uh, addressed uh, from Mr. Constantine. Uh, next meeting will be June 27, 2019. Uh, with no further business uh, to come before the board, the meeting was adjourned at 6 p.m. Respectfully submitted. I'll give the secretary a copy. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Everybody's good? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, plumbing board. Trustees, hope everybody's okay. Village residents, hello, good afternoon. <laughs> a regular meeting of the examining board of plumbers was called to order at 4.15 p.m. May 28th. We had two new applicants this month to become Tritown plumbers. Uh, the first was John McGrady of, Gen of Glen Cove. After reviewing his paperwork, he met all the uh, Tritown requirements and was accepted as a village plumber. The second applicant was uh, Joseph Tetley. After reviewing his paperwork, it was determined that he did not meet all the requirements to become a Tritown plumber, therefore he was not accepted. We also had a brief discussion on the suspension of uh, temporary gas from National Grid. Uh, that's going back and forth, that's still up in the air right now. Uh, we'll discuss at the next meeting to see where we stand with that. And there being no further business at this time, the meeting was adjourned at approximately 5.15 p.m. Thank you. Um, good evening, Mayor and Board of Trustees, and everybody. You set a nice example. <laughs> Um, uh, mostly of mine is just continuing activities every week. I field up the five requests for information sent to me by people from around the country. The latest was about a 1930s to 1950s burlesque dancer who called herself Lynn O'Neill 
the original Garter Girl, and who later became a member of the Hempstead Historical Society. And somebody's doing research on her, and actually Irene Duskovich knew this lady, so. The library? <laughs> <laughs> Not on the stage. As a member of the Hempstead Historical Society. <laughs> requests like this, people asking for research, um, and, and I help out. Uh, I created a workshop for four second grade classes from Jackson and at school. They were walked up to the Hempstead Public Library on May 17th for a tour of the historic photos and dolls in the library's downstairs community room. I supplied detailed historic background of the photos and the dolls. The teachers who accompanied the children received the more detailed version, while the children each received a handout written at the second grade level. Unfortunately, I had to be out of town on the actual day of the workshop. However, Stephanie News and Joe Abodondolo, the librarians in the children's room, are very experienced. Things went smoothly, and I hope to do more of these. Um, my work with the revision for our Wikipedia site is ongoing. Um, I am going to primary and reliable secondary sources to make sure that the information on the Wikipedia site is accurate and that it gives credit for all that our villages, village accomplishes now as well as in the past. Uh, I'm hoping to start a regular short column in the Hempstead Beacon that will present Hempstead historical tidbits and in fact the editor approved that made it just something really short with an image that would appear weekly or bi-weekly or something. Um, at the Hempstead Public Library, a lot of written material has been generated by both me and the library's local archivist, Stephen Rung, during the past two years. We are developing a formal means of archiving this material at the Hempstead Public Library. Uh, what I'm saying is, so our research is written down, because I, I didn't, have much to go on when I got started doing this. I didn't have anybody's material directly prior to me. Um, most of the material was at least 25 or, or more years old. And so we're both writing updated material and that will be archived there so it can be used as a research source. And um, I have a personal project. I've decided that all during June, I'm going to only shop in Hempstead if at all possible. So I'm discovering, you know, just how many grocery stores we really do have that show all the diversity. There's over I, I got my sneakers <laughs> at the sneaker terminal, um, and this is the first year. <laughs> and I'm having to wear them Saturday. This is the first year in years, so I'm able to walk enough to participate in Tyree Curry. So I will see you there. All right. Great. Great shop in Hampton, Europe. Yeah. Uh, Chamber of Commerce. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Deputy Mayor, Trustee. Good evening, Good evening everyone. And we do encourage Shop Local. Uh, we held on June 1st, the Hempstead Chamber had election. Um, we will be swearing in the new board on June the 19th at 261 South Franklin Street. That's the Linda Knoll Building. <coughs> the Youth Department on August 10th will be holding their pop-up shop to encourage our young entrepreneurs. Uh, and it's located at 83 Greenwich Street in Hempstead. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Griffith, what time is the meeting at 261? What time is that? That will be at six o'clock. Okay, that will be the Knowles building. Pop up, pop up, but how are we going to know? How's the village going to be notified of it? Well, we're going to be posting on our website, and also we're going to let everybody know through um, social media, as well as we're going to put up flyers as well. Okay. And the pop up shop, basically, what it is is that it's the youth department that is children selling items that they made or they purchase their self. They'll also be having a workshop held by the Hempstead Chamber of Commerce, teaching them about business, networking, and preparing for this event. Who's your new president? 
the new, um, the, it's the same president, which is Aquila Bailey, and myself is the vice president, Florona Griffith. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. So moving on to solve that upon recommendation of Patricia Perez the clerk, the board trustees hereby waives the reading of the minutes of the regular meeting of May 21st, 2019, as set stands in review. As review, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Trustee Johnson? Yes. Trustee Renfro? Yes. Trustee Daniels? Yes. Mayor Ryan? Yes. Resolve that upon recommendation of George Yale Village Treasurer. So the board trustees hereby approves to enter into an agreement with Milliman Inc., 1 Pennsylvania Plaza, 38th floor, New York, New York, 10119, to provide actuarial consulting services to the incorporated village of Hempstead for a fee not to exceed $14,500 for the fiscal year ending May 31st, 2020. Move. Trustee Johnson? Yes. Trustee Renfro? Yes. Trustee Daniels? Yes. Mayor Ryan? Yes. We saw yeah, that upon recommendation of Chief Bander, Hall Village Attorney, the Board of Trustees hereby authorizes the Village of Hempstead to enter into an agreement with the Incorporated Village of Central Island, Adams Principal Office at 303 Cent Nida Road, Oster Bay, New York, 1771, to utilize the Hempstead Police Department's outdoor fire range from January 1st, 2019, expiring on December 31st, 2020, by the rich rental fee on a batch of Schedule A. So moved. Second. Trustee Johnson. I have a question. The, the fee is $600 per session. The sessions last from 7.30, from 1,500 hours to 2,100 hours. Trustee Johnson? Yes. Trustee Renfro? Yes. Trustee Daniels? Yes. Mayor Ryan? Yes. This is all that after recommendation of Joseph Simon, Superintendent of the Building Department, the Board of Trustees hereby approves to issue a license as a Master of Building Nutrition to Brian Flanagan, 3 Cedar Lange, Huntington, New York. Mm -hmm. Now a second, please. Second. Trustee Johnson? Yes. Trustee Renfro? Yes. Trustee Daniels? Yes. Mayor Ryan? Yes. Resolve that up with recommendation of Georgia Village Treasurer that the Board of Trustees hereby authorizes to enter into a contract with Justin Khan and the Village of Hempstead to provide advice and consultation to the village regarding information technology from May 15, 2019 through May 31st, 2020. The village will compensate the consultant at the rates and for the hours set for on the attached appendix A. Why, we don't have anyone else working in this department? So I would. Now let me comment so we can perhaps solve some problem. The village is seeking to end the use of some programs and consolidating others. Justin has a unique understanding of our legacy system and is incorporating them into our new program. He is essential in this process. Do we have no one on full-time staff? He is essential. Yes. Do we have anyone on staff full-time in the IT department? We do not have anybody who can do what he is doing. That's why we're asking him to be our consultant during this period of time. How much are we paying him? We're paying him $125 an hour, 15 hours a week. So he was an employee and now he's a consultant? Correct. Are we making plans to employ someone as a full time? Uh, let, let's, <laughs> let's maybe we better move on to those so that just follow the follow it. Trustee Johnson? Yes. Trustee Renfro? Yes. Trustee Daniel? Yes. Mayor Ryan? Yes. So that a recommendation of Patrick Cook, Assistant Chief of Police Department, Elisa Barrington, Director of Human Resources, the Board of Trustees hereby authorizes Erica Lopez, Mayor Bure, to receive supplemental sick leave, a half pay, in accordance with Village Policy, Article 7, Section 5 of the CSEA Bargaining Agreement. <coughs> Second, please. 
Second. Right. Okay. Question just on the wording of the resolution.
Trustee Johnson? Yes. Trustee Renfro? Yes. Trustee Daniels? Yes. Mayor Ryan? Yes. Mayor Ryan, I forgot to make one announcement if I may. Sure. I um, just wanted to share with the trustees as well with the residents. We are currently conducting um, bilingual OSHA 30 safety training uh, in conjunction with ABBA and Genesis Construction. It started yesterday, but there's still time to sign up if you have anyone that you know who may be interested in um, having their safety certification for construction. Please reach out to Reverend Benjamin. No, hold on. We have hope. You're full? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm taking that back. <laughs> I'm over. Uh, here we go with the uh, open mic, everyone. Where's the Lucas? Uh, Jesus. Uh, I'm not ready. Let's see. Let's skip to this mic. First of all, I'd like to know uh, is the fire problem going to be the first uh, meeting or the second meeting of the month? The fire the third, third Tuesday of the month. The third. Yeah. yeah, the reason why I asked because I was in a meeting where the union deal fire department gave out the Glover dog stickers with their phone numbers on it. I like for it to be, uh, we could get the same type of stickers for all the fire department. Um, I like an update on the uh, crime as well as the upstairs in the last two weeks. Including the uh, shot spotters, so therefore we'll be more aware of what's happening. Um, I understand that there were several stabbings in the past week, about uh, three or four and so forth. Uh, one was at one of the bars that we, uh, in my area, on the east end. And I'm trying to figure out uh, what's happening with the bars and uh, what's going on with the stabbings, you know, uh, what are the fatalities. Uh, the uh, the library is it going to open on Sundays uh, sooner or not? And also, um, yes. <laughs> in terms of the uh, bars, I have the mayor has two appointments set up: one with a uh, representative of the community, and one where he'll go independently to the New York State Liquor Authority. Do what you comment on. Uh, yes, just to let you know that scavenging did not take place in the mark. Uh, where did it take place in the Popeye. Uh, Popeye. <coughs> did, did it arrive from the bar to Popeye's? I believe, no, it didn't start it. It didn't even start in the bar, but I believe that the gentleman that got stabbed was from the bar. Was it I, the reason why I asked you that because on the news media, it says that the, uh, they had an argument in the bar and, and it uh, aroused to the, uh, the stabbing outside of the bar, which was in the pocket of the little the Popeye's uh, property. So that's why I think that's my information. I hope that. Okay. Chicken is delicious. Uh, and you asked about other stabbings? Uh, yes, other stabbings, yes. There was two stabbings um, these on Green Street. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> Okay, the one on the bar that we really we were talking about at Ole Bar, it was like they said it was outside the bar. It was by Popeyes, and the rest was being by the third squad, so that's closed. Okay, and the other uh, two or three or whatever. Uh, okay, you want to specify um, which ones you're talking about? Was, uh, Greenwich Street, but we have two stabbings. Right. <laughs> it was two on the street from Kennedy Park in that little shopping. All right, yeah, one was at 270 Greenwich Street. Um, the victim stated it was gang related. It was actually an attempted robbery. They were asked for property, then one person was stabbed, his brother intervened, and he also was stabbed, not life threat. Okay, so you say that it assumed to be gang related. What is our status on gangs in those guns? Is it, is it increasing or decreasing? That would be a question related to the gang unit. I'm not privy to that information to tell you what the status is. Um, your position tonight is to check and get back to us. No, my position tonight is to inform you of the crime in the village, the shot spotter that you requested. But as far as gangs are concerned, 
if I knew you wanted to have that information, then I'd get it from the person yeah, well, who was a okay. commanding officer of the gang. Let's have a month if you report on it. Come again, you know. Uh, That's right. I go from one end to the other to try to figure out the, the root of the stuff. Yeah, right. I'm saying, so I just don't say stabbing, stabbing is gangly, and what's going on now? Because it's it our young gang increasing or decreasing and stuff of that nature. That's why I go from one end to the other. So if you, if you come again, you understand why I go from one end I totally understand, but this is my first time here. Okay. That's no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> it's every two weeks. All right. Uh, <laughs> what about shots, Bob? What happened here? Shots fired, you had 12 alerts, 12 shots fired between the May 21st and June 2nd. Okay. Alright, then he personal damage, property damage. There was property damage at 55 Myrtle Avenue where a fence was damaged. A person was injured at 4 Martin Luther King Drive, shot in the leg. Uh, yesterday, there was a someone went to Winthrop Hospital with a gunshot wound to the throat. Um, it may be self inflicted based on where she was shot. There was no crime scene when I went there, so that's the story she was given. Okay, so um, the response was, was, was um, by phone or by shotgun? What was the uh, which one? Uh, the two shooters. Okay, the one I am okay with, two shots by the alert. It took place inside of a car. Usually when it's inside of a car, there's no alerts. Inside of the building, you won't get an alert. It's outside, you get an alert. Right. Uh, what about the, uh, the fire department? Give us a sticky button. I'll go next to that question. And also, what about the library? Is, is it anywhere in the future that's going to open on Sundays? Uh, I can tell you that in order for that to happen, the village has to figure out the budget for it and approve it. The reason it stopped being on Sundays was that was taken out of the budget. So we, we, and we then if, if the budget is approved, then the library has to um, figure out how to hire the staff to do it. So that's a thing. They just shift them around. Oh, no, 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 Go ahead, go ahead. Well, they are working on it because the library <coughs> would like to have library hours also. But these things aren't just snap fingers. We did figure out the budget for that, and it's forty-one thousand dollars. And that's uh, by hiring new personnel or yes. by reshifting their, their schedules. I, it, the budget is forty-one thousand dollars is what they need. I don't know whether she hired new or reshifted uh, schedule, but we're, we're looking to open uh, hopefully in September. Okay, no, because I, 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 my idea of, of doing that would be to reshift their schedule. Who goes off on the weekend would be, be off during the week. Uh, I mean, uh, then again, you know, I, I do think something. Thank you. <laughs> Sylvia Silberger. Hi. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm a, I live in Vermont Avenue. Uh, I've been here for a little, a little over a decade. For the past couple of years, I've been working in an alternative transportation organization because I like to bike and walk, and I found that it's really hard and uncomfortable to do so in Long Island and in Hempstead as well. Um, one of the things our organization's been doing is an, an annual bike to work parade. Um, that uh, was in the spring, we've had three of them so far, and uh, we moved it to September to correspond with Mobility Week, which is uh, uh, an initiative taken by the Long Island chapter of the U.S. Green Business Council of uh, Green Transportation, Sustainable Transportation Committee. It expanded on Car Free Day Long Island. Um, and one of the things that they are trying to do, and I would love to see, is to get municipalities involved in this uh, this endeavor and, and think about ways they can work on green transportation initiatives. And I have been talking to Charles already about um, Hampstead being co-sponsor of this coming parade. And right now the parade starts at Hofstra and in the usual route has been through Eisenhower Park, about six and a half miles. And I'd be happy to work with the route that went more through Hampstead because I think Hampstead would be a great place to sponsor such a parade and it would get kudos from the U.S. Green Business Council, which does give awards for these things. Now, while I'm up here as well, I'd also like to talk about maybe 
talking to somebody about establishing a bicycle pedestrian advisory committee for uh, uh, Hempstead, a committee that would work with local governments and local uh, ad advocacy organizations to think about how to make Hempstead more walkable and bikeable and in general alternative transportation friendly. We are one of the most dangerous places in the tri-state area for uh, pedestrian fatalities right now, and we have a lot of bikers and walkers in Hampstead, many of which don't have a choice. I would love to talk to somebody, whoever that would be, about doing such a thing in Hampstead and helping them with that, if possible, or at least discussing it. And finally, I'm going to give just one little pet peeve since I'm up here and i got 50 seconds. Bennett Ave is really hard to cross on foot. There's a lot of kids crossing here. I don't know if you've done it. But uh, Westbury, the way it hits into Bennett Ave, nobody slows down there. <laughs> so, so when you're at Elk Street or Pennsylvania Ave and you're crossing the street, you're really sort of dodging, especially in the wrong time of day. So I just want to throw that out there. You need, need a secret study. study. You need a secret study for Bennett Ave. Yeah, 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 I agree. Okay. okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good suggestion. Let's see what we can do here. Renee Holmes. Good evening, Mayor, and trustees, and all the attendees of the meeting. I, ha I have only one thing listed on there, but I do have a question about something that was done at the last meeting. But the first thing I'll do is ask about the master development, I'm calling it the master development agreement. Several months ago, it was asked, is that agreement still in effect? And every month, I think once a month at least, myself or someone else asks about it, what's the status? And it doesn't seem like it, we have, a, we do get an update that it's being looked at, but that that's just not enough of an answer for me. Because by now, we should know if it's a valid agreement. And in fact, I think we should know if it's a valid agreement or if it's a dead deal. And I don't, and I don't think that somebody should have to keep asking about it in order to get an answer. I think it should be, if it's, a, if it's still in effect, tell why it is and go on with it. But if it's not, address it. Because it's been at least three months that it's been raised at, each, at least one meeting each month. That's my first thing. So, you want me to say my second thing too? Yeah. Sure. Okay. My second thing concerns the um, permits that, that might not be the correct terminology. For the festivals that um, filed their applications on or before April 2nd, when we had the, my remembrance of the meeting in April is that it was determined that it was going to be, if you had an application in, you pay the 80% as was the new policy, the new formula slash policy. I may be using the wrong words. Was there a separate meeting after last month's meeting to agree to allow people who had filed before that April, on or before the April 2nd date, or was it February 2nd date? Is it April 2nd? April 2nd date? that they would only have to pay a particular percentage? Was there another meeting that the public did not know about? The I'm not suggesting that anybody did anything underhanded. I'm just trying to understand because it didn't seem like that was a decision that was made at a meeting that, that I had that I to That was voted, okay, so at the April 2nd meeting, the board voted that all parade and festival applications, the applicant would pay 80% of the total cost right. at the April 2nd meeting. Right. The second meeting of the month in April, which you attended, you asked the very same question. But uh, yeah. Um, what was going to happen with those applications that were submitted prior to April 2nd? There were six applications prior to April 2nd. The board voted to allow those six applicants to pay 50% of the total cost. Then, okay, then this is my confusion. Then why did, at the last, not last meeting, but the meeting before that, it was something was denied, and then the people who came from the the community left because they they were complaining that they wouldn't be able to pay it. Is that is that the same thing, the fifty percent number? Because they were saying forty three thousand. I, I don't know. I, I, that was when we, but that was the day that it was voted on to be there at eight twenty. They were voting to, to come and try to say that they were in before 
the deadline or this was being decided and they wanted to be treated okay. under the old rules. That's all I wanted was just right. clarification of that. But the other question, I still would like it. Maybe a better answer. Oh. Yeah. So the MDA, the MDA, the Master Development Agreement, is a contract. A contract. Oh, I know. A contract stands unless a judge rules that it is void or uh, for some reason. But there's been some region and some litigation. As you know, there were lawsuits filed after the MDA was entered into. There were appeals that were subsequently taken from those lawsuits. Oral argument was just held, I think, close to three months ago, two, maybe two months, give or take. And the decision on that oral argument has not come down yet. So it's still it's still on appeal. So okay. in the first department. Okay. So to be efficient with village resources, if it's on appeal, I don't know if it makes sense for us to start another litigation proceeding, doing something else with it when it's still on appeal with the appellate court. Okay, so just so I am clear about how the village of Hempstead does it, well, I used to look the village didn't do it this way. If the, the, the village attorneys, if, if, she, if he or she said the contract is ended, that was it. Um, but in the village- Oh, there was no end date. There, there was no end date, but it had to start by a certain date, right? There, were, there certain... were different um, projects that were to take place under the agreement, uh -huh. most of which have been stayed because of the pending litigation that subsequently, subsequently went on appeal. Okay. All right. I just, I mean, I, yeah. I never heard all that before. I just heard that it was being considered, so I thought it was maybe the village itself was the one deciding it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Please rise. Good evening. It's hot as it is in here. Oh, God. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm in a hot seat today. But then that is not the assistant chief. Um, question. I was, uh, thank you. Um, I heard there was, a, a, there was an attempted rape of a young girl on Terrace Avenue. I don't know if you have that on that sheet. Um, in regards to people sleeping all over the village, what is the police department doing about that? That's the police department. To the board, I mentioned about this incinerator. You said you would have some information for me at this meeting today. And um, in regards to I'm trying to get everything in this two minutes, um, Hempstead Village, our new treasurer. treasurer. What is the status of our money? That's what I want to know. The fire marshal, what are we doing in regards to fire marshal? Is he on board yet? And what is he doing in regards to the overcrowding in our village? And as you guys know, I am the membership chair to our new Hempstead Community Land Trust. I need your money. We need that to work. Okay, I'm serious about that. And um, I love what you said in regards to massive development. Um, because people don't know that when litigation happens, everything freezes. So I don't know why they keep trying to get over on us, trying to sell and build, build. Can't nothing happen when litigation happens. So they're trying to get rid of land in the middle of all this. That's fraud. And they should have been, we should have mentioned that that they tried to move land in the middle of litigation. So I don't know, did we mention that when we went to a pe appellate? And it has to go, and it has to go to Supreme Court. So we have to Supreme Court, okay? Anyway, back to what I said. Um, I, but I think that we need to, I think that we have, we need to look for other things. We can look at Sam's Club, that can hire at least two or three hundred of our people in this village. That's something we could look for. We don't need, we, we over, already overcrowded, but we don't need any more apartments. We need jobs. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, we need jobs. And I'm upset that I called and I was worried about somebody that lived in this village and I still don't have an answer. Somebody was calling me who was sick and I called you, I called the police department there should have been in some way. Anybody know where Zita lives? Anybody here know Zita? That was the problem. You gave me the first name. I couldn't find it. Zeta. Zeta keeps calling me, and I, I, I hope nothing is wrong with her because I don't know where she lives. And she kept calling. So if you know where she lives, she kept calling me, but I called the police department to try to help me find her. 
And she kept calling me, and I don't know if she's sick or something's wrong with her. And we should be caring about our own citizens. I don't know where she lives, and I called, I called you, Mr. Mayor, and I know you could find out, but. I couldn't find out where she lives either. I need more information from you. Okay, but I only have a phone number, but there's some way the police department should be able to do a reverse directory on the yes, cell phone yes, or something. That's a good point. I did, but I just, I called the police department, they told me there was nothing they could do to help me. Is that true? They I, can't do anything to help her? I didn't take the call. I'm not sure. That's the call. He can't just yell out from the. That's not well, I'm just. Well, no, he can't yell no, out. He's, he's, suggesting well, he's helping me out. Right? Well, I just want you to know, because I was, I was very worried and I kept calling her back. And she could be she could be stroked out or something in her house right now. And I've been calling her for days trying to get help, and I don't know what's wrong with her. Has she ever answered the phone? She answered, but she doesn't say anything. So something could be wrong with her. Absolutely. Do you know where she lives? I don't know. That's why I call. I don't know where she lives. I just have her phone number. I know she lives on Hilton, but where? She's on Hilton between Mulford and Fulton, next to the law office on the west side of Hilton. There's a white building. It's the law office. Her house is right next to it. Okay. I can't give you an address, but I know. See, that. I don't know where she lives. Maybe you could let me know where the address is. Okay. She kept calling me, and I she wouldn't respond. Okay. Appreciate the concern. That's good. Get the address and get the details. To answer your question, and I think the question that Ms. Lucas said, if you do have an address, we will do a welfare check. Yes. Right. That's why I called yeah. the police department, put it, and they said, I didn't know my address, but I didn't know my phone number. Well, I think we'll know it shortly. Because I actually paid, paid like, um, you know, those, those phone, on whitepages.com to, to get an address for her, from her phone number, but it didn't okay. work for me. We appreciate it. Okay, so. Thank you. So the young girl, uh, did you hear about the attempted rape on the young girl at one of the towns? Yes, I did. Um, the third squad is investigating that. Until it's closed, we are not privy to that information. So I have no idea what's going on with it. These people are sleeping all over Hempstead in the, in the, what do you call it, panhandling? It's very serious. <clears throat> yes, um, I spoke to the commander <clears throat> of the community policing unit. He spoke to DSS. He's trying to work on that, but there's very little he can do in that aspect. I mean, it goes beyond a homeless person. He's not coming in a crime. Obviously, in the village code, the panhandling is, is a violation, which we'll address when that comes up. But for someone walking around in the street that's homeless. I'm sorry, like yeah. I came out of VNT and there's a man panhandling there every day. Yeah, that we could address. Okay. Absolutely. And I would like to meet, maybe we, could, I, we have this community day, maybe meet offices day. Like, we don't know. We have a lot of new offices. We, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah. Um, because we don't know who they are. I would like to, I mean, I know who you are, but they know who my new offices are. Okay. The incinerator. Did you find out anything about that? Yeah, there is no incinerator being built down there. And so it's not, it's no, not it's going not. to be? No, it's not going to be. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, and what about our fire marshal? We have a fire marshal? We have somebody who was at the county Pluto first time since the 30s. And we've had a Hempstead resident from the Hempstead Fire Department. And what is it we like of him? We, we have a lot of overcrowding. And as far as like, you know, in the apartment buildings, it's very, it's very serious, especially Especially in the apartment buildings on 100 Terrace and especially 560 and 600, it's serious overcrowding. You can work with the school district as far as how many students living in a one bedroom apartment. We know how many one bedroom apartments we have. That's very serious. We'll get the building department involved in that as well. Okay, and on the treasurer, what's the status of our money in the village? <laughs> The, the short answer is it is as it was. I'm here a month now. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fiscal year just ended last Friday, so we uh, are into our new fiscal year now. So I, I don't know where we, we're going to finish yet. I am trying to figure that out. But there's still invoices coming in from last fiscal year uh, that we'll have to uh, pay. So I, I can't tell you right now what, what the end of the fiscal year is, where, how we fare. But I hope to know myself very soon. Okay, so I'll see you in July. Here. Okay. Thank Don't you. forget your membership for the Hempstead Community Land Trust. I'll see you at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Debbie Monroe? Jill Hill. Because it's not on the website at all. It just says there's an activity. What's your name? Joe. Rough, and I know there's a schedule uh, for paving the roads. And I just wondered when that when that was supposed to happen, or is it contingent on finishing the sidewalks? Um, 
And the other question is, uh, as I go around the village, um, I just it, I just feel like some of the shops could just look better without it necessarily cost you much. And I'm wondering if there are codes that maybe could be um, refreshed in the minds of some of the shop owners. Enforced. Uh, yeah. Not refreshed. Enforced. We have a code enforcer assigned to the downtown, so I'll give them a call. Yeah. So, um, do you have any other main streets? The, the question on main streets is whether to repave it, which we agree it needs, and then perhaps rip it up to correct the sewer issue, or see if we get the sewer situation resolved. And we have uh, erred on the side of waiting for the sewers. Oh, it's a sewer system underneath this, that, years old. that has to be, that is still in the process of upgrading. That's, that's like all over. The is, is not complete, and the direction that we're going to go is, is not yet answered. And we're holding off on the paving for that purpose. Oh, so the report's incomplete. Report may not be incomplete. The report has not been paid for, so we don't have it. Okay, oh, okay. All right, so there's just a lag and getting all the pieces to fit together. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bethany, just to let you know that they have the code enforcement has started on Main Street. They started at the corner of Main and, and front, and they're working their way up on both sides of the street. Oh. Okay, well, it's good. good to know. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Edwards. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Trustees. Good evening. Good evening. I have one question and on one request. My question is about the public hearing I was held earlier. Could you? The public hearing. The public hearing I was held earlier at 615 tonight. Yes. Yeah, I couldn't be here, I got here late. So, my question is uh, what was the urgency? Of amending chapter 24 of the code. What was the urgency for that? And what's the reason for that? Well, we wanted to be in compliance with state law. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we did, we took out the term indefinite and we changed it to where the village clerk has a two year term and the village treasurer has a two year term. There was also some other changes instead of calling it a uh, police the justice court, it's simply a village justice court. And the rest of the changes were somewhat subtle. But yeah. said he was coming. So, so it wasn't in comparison to four. It, it, was, it, was, it, was, it wasn't in comparison to four, you see. Right. It wasn't in comparison oh. to four, is what he said. That's right. And there was no urgency. Um, this administration is um, trying to review the codes to make sure that they're updated and they're in compliance with state law. And just as, as time moves on, we need to refresh our codes and update them. Um, the historian, Ms. Bethany, just mentioned code enforcement with regards to um, stores on Main Street. There is, for instance, the code does have, um, it does address signage and the size of signs, but one of the things that I know Commissioner Thompson and I have talked about is possibly, you go into some of the villages, if you've seen that the, uh, the facades are uniformed, yes. and they're near like village areas, it's just a beautification type thing. We've discussed that. So that's something else that we'll probably be looking at within the year. But there, there's a process to it. There are things that happen, and we're trying to make the changes as we go along. There's another public hearing on June 18th regarding um, zombie homes, dangerous buildings, right, and how we're going to be addressing those. So you'll see them going, you'll see them in the future, code changes that are going to be coming up. So how so how would that impact the village clerk, for example? So in two years she will be gone? She's been no, here. Not necessarily. In two years she could be rehired. Right. Okay. So that's what you said last year, Mayor. Say it again. So in a two year period, the contract is up, yeah. the board's bushes, and we know. That's what you said last year. Not even just get rid of basically. Well that's always an option with the person. So last year, just so two so Miss McNeil brings up. Um, so, and if you remember, two years ago, should I I was told that the. No, I'm saying No, no, she, he was asking that only the person that might speak. Oh. But you can continue, please. With your oh, so Miss McNeil brings up a point related to what you're saying. So, for instance, the board took action, I think it was two years ago, took action. But because the code wasn't proper at that time, the action they took was also improper. So
So you have to, you have to, in order to appoint the clerk or the treasurer, the code has to allow for that to happen once the term is up. Our code previously had the clerk and the treasurer as indefinite. So if the board wanted to take action and maybe change clerks or rearrange the clerks, they couldn't do that. But does it, it doesn't impact this individual except that yeah, so she has a two year term. So, 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 so you say it does impact the, it doesn't matter her, anybody in the seat. I'm, anyone I'm, that's I'm, I'm in the seat. I'm speaking in the seat. Right. Right. So anyone in the seat, that will impact them adversely in two years if the board doesn't like that's what, that's what the possibility. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So that's not, that's not good at all. Well, I'll tell you this, you know, most of the department heads can be impacted month to month, like myself. Right? Mm -hmm. The clerk is guaranteed two years. So she's on what, six years now? Four years? Uh, uh, my next, I have a request. Well, my request is. She's going to live here. I have a request. Now my, now, my request is, I've mentioned this to the mayor before, previously before. I also want the code to be amended to up, to have the landlord's fines be upgraded. Because the fines and stamps today is very, very, very low. Now, that's not the case necessarily. What the fines are in place is up to the judge as to what he is going to use as his fine for that individual. Yeah, $50. $50. $50. I'm, I'm just telling you that so hold, so hold. the issue may not be the fine itself in terms of the potential, it is what the judge determines. So, how can we get the board here to help out? You will be elected judge every four years. No, so, no, I'm saying, I'm not saying so, that. So, what can the board do? The, the we cannot just give a dollar. The right guy that was mentioned that is, you guys have a jurisdiction there. No, it's not that's the that's that's jurisdiction of the court. Is that correct? Yeah, that's not correct. Yeah. The judge has jurisdiction of the court. He does. The judge sets the fine. He does not use the fines as a fundraising capacity. So, the right guy uses his judgment as to what the fine should be. So, the right guy that was was incorrect when everybody stated that. Pardon? The right guidelines board stated that you, the board here has the authority to do this. Right, they were making so statement. 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 I don't know if they made that statement. Yeah, that's the statement. Right. 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 The judge has the authority. So you don't have the authority. Yes, you have authority to change the penalty. Yes, yes. 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 uh, excuse me. Thank you. Oh, I will entertain a motion to go into executive session. So we'll. Uh, before we go on to a let's get a second. I just try the motion. The motion is going. Go ahead. I want to um, thank everyone that came out for the annual Memorial Day Parade. All the participants. I want to single out Miss Juanita Harwood for the great job she did. Thank you. We were all great. Glad that you brought that up. It's a successful day and a good day. We have the oldest parade on Long Island. 33 years? Yeah, that's something. Okay, let's entertain a motion for the executive session. We have a motion for Second. I did say we will have to do it again, so of course I'll Trustee Johnson? Yes. Trustee Raffro? Yes. Trustee Daniels? Yes. Mayor Ryan? Yes, we will not come back and vote. We will come back and close the meeting. Okay, so